Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. President Calvin Coolidge was onto something when he said, if the spirit of liberty should vanish in other parts of the Union, it could all be replenished from the generous store held by the people of this brave little state of Vermont. Coolidge's words echo the tenets of the Vermont Historical Society to preserve the spirit of this place and its people, immigrants, indigenous, and innovators alike, Vermonters all. We can't change history, but we can change how history is shared. Our guest today is Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Welcome. This is great to have you here again. Happy to be here. So the, the Vermont Historical Society has been around almost since Vermont was formed. Uh, what's the history of your organization? Sure. So we were founded in 1838 and created by an act of the state legislature. Um, as most historical societies in New England were, the idea was to preserve the, uh, the stories and the memories of the founding generation, you know, that founded the state. They were, right. they were dying by 1838. Right. Um, so the state created us. And uh, we, since the 1840s, have always had a presence in Montpelier. So first in the state house mm -hmm. um, up until 1918, um, and then in what's now the Supreme Court building, right? And then in 1971, the Pavilion Building in Montpelier, where we still have um, a museum. The Historical right. Society has told you know many different stories through publications and exhibits, and um, you know throughout its its time. And Indeed. our mission has been to tell Vermont's story. Okay, <laughs> and uh, so tell us a little bit more about that the role of an historical society, you know, within the context of the culture of the people and, and place. Yeah, so it's changed over time. Um, in that 19th century, it was telling that story of, um, of the founders. Sure. And, uh, you know, we like to think of that as, you know, the, the, the white men and yeah. the great Ethan battles. Ethan Allen and Chittenden. And <laughs> you got it, <laughs> right. you got it. So yeah, we, sure. we know that, it's certainly part of our story, but all Vermonters have contributed to how this state has evolved. Um, so for the past couple couple of decades, uh, historical societies really are more focused on the story of those Vermonters, those individual Vermonters, and using the resources we have, such as museum objects, fine mm. art, and um, we call it ephemera, works on mm. paper, that help tell a story of somebody who maybe didn't have their life written down on paper. And I think that's the real strength of museums and archives. Absolutely, and still very significant to who and what we are. Absolutely. So your collections are housed in actually two different locations, uh, as we've said, the um, Vermont uh, Museum, but also the Vermont History Center and Library, which is in Barrie. So tell us a little about that. Yeah, in the, in the 19, early 1990s, if we remember, Montpelier flooded and the Historical sure. Society Oh no, all of our <laughs> archives are kept in the basement of the pavilion building. Yeah. At that time, the board started looking and saying, we need to move to higher ground. Um, and they purchased the old Spalding High School building in Barrie. Right. Beautiful. beautiful location, you know, gorgeous building. Turreted red yeah. <laughs> stone building. And you know, of course, brings all the problems old buildings well, do. Sure. <laughs> um, but fully renovated that into a state-of-the-art museum um, and collection storage facility. And so uh, since uh, 1999, um, we've been in that location. In 2003, we really kind of upgraded all of the museum facilities there. Um, so our library, right. our archives, our administrative offices, and some small galleries are in that location. Right, and so the public can come to that as well. Uh, clearly to go to the galleries, but also to do research that they might want to do. Yes. Not just for historians. Right. So the place that people are probably most familiar with, uh, again, is the Vermont History Museum that is still housed in, in Montpelier at the Pavilion Building. Let's talk about what people will find there. So we just got done redoing the whole entrance to that building so you can really feel like you're walking into a museum rather than an office mm. building. So mm -hmm. you enter through the doors um, and you're greeted by... Through the front doors now? Through the front, front doors, doors. Right through the front right, doors right. and they're glass. And as you can see, there's a, a nod towards um, the 
history of the historical society uh -huh. with a cabinet of curiosities. Uh -huh. um, right on the right, um, our catamount, the last mm. catamount, uh, unfortunately killed in the state of Vermont, <laughs> is there. Um, and then as you make your way through, you can move your way through history and you mm. see an Abnaki um, wigwam. Um, and yeah, so we, we start with 10,000 years ago, mm -hmm. and then start working your way up through uh, the history. A lot of it's interactive, so you can walk into these rooms, bring mm -hmm. kids. There's lots of toys and things to play mm -hmm. with. Um, you're seeing an education kit right now that visitors can use when they're moving their way through the museum. Um, so a lot of fun stuff. Oh, course. there's that catamount. That really was the last one? That was the last one. Oh, that's that so sad. One. I call it a, a sticky <laughs> object. It's something that people remember. Sure. I remember going to the Historical yeah. Society and seeing that. And so we moved it right front and center mm. of the lobby to really pull visitors into and explore this space. Right. That's awesome. So you have all these great things and here's here's the mural that was that was moved from Vermont life from right? national life national yeah life. and national this tells life. the story okay, of, of Vermont up to 1959 um, and you know of course painted in, in 59 so visitors are asked to think about what they see what they don't see um, how they can be a historian and add mm. themselves to this story so mm. that greets them and when they finish the exhibit they're able to put themselves back into that exhibit through an interactive photo booth I, I love that so what's what's missing here well I am missing exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we have all these things in, in the collection. They're a pretty amazing collection. Talk to us about the purpose of things beyond just display and, you know, for our, it's fun to see them. But there's, there's another purpose that historians find with these objects and, yeah. and choosing the objects. Right. So this kind of goes back to we had this old mission of historical societies and museums and it was collect and preserve. And that was the sole mission, to collect and preserve. But now we're asking that question, for what purpose? Why? You know, who cares? Why are we collecting and preserving? So that becomes secondary to understanding the lives of people who came before us, mm. those that lived in this state, those that contributed to the state. And so I love objects, and I've spent my career studying objects. And when you can take um, a piece of furniture that somebody used for, for 50 years and understand a bit about their life, and this is perhaps mm. somebody who didn't have a book written about them, they didn't write a diary, but we can understand what their life was like, we get a better sense of our own community. And so we, talk, we can talk about old chairs from the 17th right. century, but we can also talk about, say, protest buttons that were worn five years ago on the State House lawn, we collect that wide, wide range of materials. To help us be there and remember. Do you have a favorite item? I really don't. I mean, <laughs> it changes. That's like always you, a hard you question. You asked me this week, I like one thing. Right. This week, I like the, the, the next. We just acquired a baton from the uh, Vermont Marble Company. Um, or a, a watchman from the Vermont Marble Company. And he was a watchman during the marble strikes in the 1930s, which led huh. to um, labor reform throughout the United States. He wood burned this baton with his memories of being there during that time with almost wow. cartoons and images of what was happening. And so we just acquired this and fabulous. it's so great. We're gonna put it in the museum. So you need to come to the museum okay. to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fabulous. So um, the, the, the museum in, in Montpelier is obviously a, a resource for all of us and certainly for young Vermont school children. Talk about the programming that you have there for our young young people. We do, we see over 6,000 school kids a year. Um, so Vermont uh, school children are still making that trip to Montpelier to understand civics. Yes. They come to the State House. We work very closely with them, and then mm. they come to the History Museum. Mm. And so we have our education manager hates it when I say it, but we have like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> they don't call them scavenger hunts anymore. I'm forgetting the exact term. But well, students, that's fun. yeah, it, it's like it's like guided learning. Sure. So they work their way through this exhibit um, and with guiding questions to understand what they're seeing and doing. Then we have programs for them depending on age. Um, they can look at maps, they can look at objects, like I talked about that chair. How do we yeah. read an object? And for older students, we even get into things like looking at census records, pairing mm -hmm. census records with inventories and maps and, and then objects to try to put together the story of somebody's life. We, we look especially mm -hmm. at, um, say, the Italian immigrant families in Barrie through this program. Right. So Fabulous. again, people that aren't as well documented. Um, as you would see. But but understanding that that whole 
history through, I mean, re that's how research gets, can get so exciting. It is, exciting. it's exciting. So t let's talk about outreach. Um, it's a principle of the Historic Society, and obviously there are many um, historical societies all around the state. How does your staff do outreach? So one of our big outreach programs, and again, it relates to, to students, is right. Vermont History Day. Ah, and this right, brings sure. students in from all over the state. They do independent projects and they present them. Last year we were at UVM um, and we had over 400 kids wow. choosing to participate in this. And it's huge. So it's 400 kids, 100 judges. They all bring their friends and their family to this day of excitement. And the top award winners, we send them down to Washington, D.C. And they compete down there. They meet our federal delegation. They visit the Smithsonian. They do all sorts of great things. And these are Vermont kids learning right. about history. Um, so and that's a great program. More, pop more popular than ever. Yeah. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, those historical societies. Um, how do you support them? They're all over, almost every, every town in the state has there a historical society. There are over 190. That's amazing. I think it's 191 Fabulous. right now, local societies. And I talk about that as a huge piece of outreach in that they're doing history yeah. on the ground. We support them through workshops. Uh, we have a full-time employee that goes out to local societies to help them with everything from governance to putting on programs. Um, we invite them to come visit us and mm. do programs in Montpelier. And of course, we then send our experts out to do you know, lectures or songs, you, you, you name it, um, at local societies throughout the state. Fantastic, and do you talk about how to, how to deal with history now, how you're, how you're changing the way we look at history and, and how how should people think about it when they go to a historical society? We do, and we try to lead by example. Uh -huh. You know, you can never tell Vermonters what to do. We try to, <laughs> you know, give good examples. We have a publishing arm as well, so we publish a lot of books, and we're really kind of thinking about kind of more modern ideas in, in history and always kind of coming back to that idea of what does it mean to be right. a Vermonter? Right. Awesome. So how can people um, learn more about your society? So you can go to our website on www.vermonthistory.org and uh, give us a call, 802-479-8500, or visit us in Barrie or Montpelier. Okay, thank you, Steve Perkins, the Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, for keeping our history alive. It's fabulous. Thank you for being here. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.